So I've never liked this bed. I didn't like the finish on it. I don't know if it'll show up in camera, but it's all fiberglass and the side of it just kind of dimples all the way down, just like most fiberglass pieces. When they build it, look what they do to the fact the factory cross members. They just butchered them off with a torch. <clears throat> Another thing I don't like. He just cut them off with a torch or something to make room for the B&W hitch. So I don't like aftermarket companies because this is the kind of crap they do. It's awful. There it goes on its way. All right, it's part two of the C4500 build and there were some questions in the last video in the comments about that suspension and why I wanted to replace it when you know most people thought it was okay well uh, you know in most cases it probably is but I'll talk about uh, what what we're looking for and why uh, this one you saw the brackets came down it had that beam I'll show you in a second but that beam come over and that beam was real tall and it left us with just a little bit of travel uh, before we hit the bump stops and we don't want that and uh, we'd like to have something with more travel and a taller bag because uh, taller bag means I can get more travel and I can get it a better I can adjust it and get a better ride out of it every single suspension made uh, air ride that I've messed with uh, they want a setting from the top of uh, the u-bolts usually to the bump stop to be a certain measurement and that's your travel on it so it's not like I'm making this stuff up we're going by manufacturer specs but one of the reasons we didn't care for this suspension is um, the way it's built most manufacturers of air ride suspension uh, this arm right here on everybody else is a leaf spring it's not solid structural steel with no give uh, they they do it with a with a spring steel so that it can tell help to absorb some of the the shock off the road as well instead of just having this arm and you see how short this is you know this thing bottoms out so I get my foot on here like I can I can barely compress this thing with my weight. I'm pushing 190 pounds. It's a very stiff bag, you know. Um, and I just think it could be improved upon. It's not because it doesn't work. It works okay. But uh, if I'm going to build a truck, I'm going to and I'm going to move the axle. Well, I'm going to build it with something I think will work better. So let's go look at a couple suspensions. Um, keep in mind this this frame here is only eight and seven eighths tall. Uh, and everything we're going to look at is probably going to be uh, 10 and a quarter about. So we got to be mindful of the brackets because we don't want any of our holes to be within two inches of this. Um, this is a GM factory hole, so and the diameter, they decided that this was okay. But we don't want any holes within two inches of a top rail. In a commercial vehicle, it's especially, they did it probably because of that diameter. But... What we're going to be working with is going to be much larger than this, the diameter. So, uh, you know, we'll get dangerously close to the edge, and the possibility of the cracking is just too high. You, we don't, and, and you go by manufacturer specs, and uh, on Peterbilt, from the top flange to the center of that hole, I don't think they want uh, anything less than two inches, the same on the bottom, on Peterbilt and Kenworth. So, let's go look at a couple suspensions I'm thinking about. We also need to be mindful of this width of our spring is three inches and our axle tube is four and a quarter so if we can find something that has a three inch wide spring on a four and a quarter that makes the installation a little bit easier and then we have to be mindful of this that we only have about an inch and three eighths from the bolt bolt to here so uh, we got to make sure we don't have anything on the back side in that area but it looks like it's pretty close. So getting that caliper out shouldn't be a problem with the airbag coming out in this area. Let's go look. All right, so this is the first suspension that I was considering. This is an international uh, leaf air ride suspension. And as you can see, the, the frame on this one is 10, let's call it 10 and a quarter. And you see how much taller this bracket is. Uh, we won't be able to use that bracket on our frame and and be far enough away from where I want to be 
so that doesn't work real well i do like the suspension because as you can see you see the paint kind of uh kind of cracked in this way that's because that is a spring and it has actually you know had to had a load on it and sprung and basically cracked the paint so this system uses a a, tra a trailing arm or a locator bar that holds the the axle forward and back and it ties into the saddle the mount back here and that's what keeps that axle from moving forward and back so uh, that leaf spring comes over the axle and you see the di the thickness here it's this is quite a bit thinner than that big stack that link made so that right there already increases our rate of travel our amount of travel not a rate but our amount so that's that's beneficial we're only like an inch and a quarter thick right here and the bump stop we're not quite touching and like i said every every suspension manufacturer has a spec of what the distance should be from here to the bottom of their bump stop and that's their that's their working travel so this one comes down here drops real nice and flattens out and gets our bag underneath the frame right here now that's going to present um, could present problems if you are going to keep your factory air, uh, fuel tank on yours and you want to do this i'm not so um because my fuel tank is right in that area and this this bag would it would hit it i'm not keeping that fuel tank so i want my bags under the the frame if i can i like that i'd rather have it under the frame versus out here pushing on the frame i'd rather push directly up on the center of the bottom of the frame got a nice crossover bar got a little bit of rust jacking that we need fixed um but we could accommodate we could we could change that out if we needed to i like how the shock is mounted back here it moves it to the back it's out of our way we got plenty of clearance in here that's pretty nice the only drawback to this is two things it's a three and a half inch leaf spring and that front hanger is too tall I don't think I can make that hanger work with what we want to do. Uh, track bar, radius arm, pan hard bar, whatever, we'll have to add that. So uh, parts of this look good, um, but I don't think this is the best we can do. So let's see what else we got. This is a, uh, a Link air ride suspension system. This was on an International. You could just you know unbolt it and bolt this in place. And it's got little bitty airbags in here and uh, it does help quite a bit on some of these uh, rough ride and spring ride cabs and you know I see them on air ride as well so we will consider whether we need to use that or not I don't I don't think we do but because um, I think we're going longer with a better air ride we should be good and we may have something else going on too but let's look at let's see what else we got this entire frame section is something that um, i've been holding on to for another build but i want to show this suspension this is a freightliner chassis a frame and suspension um, it uses the airliner suspension i really like the airliner suspension i've used it a good bit and a lot of the things i like about it is you see how low this bracket is it still has six bolts on it but they still it sticks down here a good ways which really works well on our factory frame another thing is it's a three inch spring and it goes under the axle so with that spring going under the axle it really clears up a lot of room up here uh, one drawback is the shocks in this area i don't know if that really hurts us at all um, because we can uh, we can deal with that i think it's okay and the bottom spring curves under instead of having that crossbar it just curves under get your bag underneath the, the airbags underneath the frame where i like it brackets are simple not a big deal uh, pan hard bar whatever we do we got to make one and make the brackets and all that it's not a big deal but uh travel would be good uh they're they're simple not very many moving parts not a lot to replace and what does need replace is not expensive on these um, that's one thing i like common problem i see with these is steel bolt aluminum bracket uh, corrodes in here and you get easier in this area it'll crack and uh, through one of these in the hanger but you know they're replaceable and then i see these bushings going bad in that leaf spring and when it does it uh it starts to let it work like this and when it does it starts working on the on the uh cast here on the block between the spring and the axle tube i'm not exactly sure how this happens but it starts to wear that and they become loose and it allows this thing to twist um and it happens on both sides usually at the same time is what i found 
but it's a good system it's a good uh a good setup i really like it because it allows you to really have a nice travel and keeps that keeps that uh, leaf spring at a, at a nice rate so it's comfortable to drive uh, very good ride so uh, that may be an option but uh, let's see what else we got so this is uh, another international as you can see this one's a cast iron bracket goes steel to steel and again three and three bolts each side so six and it's low to the low to the frame so that works out well drops it down real good uh, kind of almost the same design as the airliner and it's a three inch spring as well goes under the axle a little bit different here is the top centering pin the the mount here the bump stop mount is well i guess it's the u-bolt mount it's slotted so you can you know use it on many different axles and then it drops down and the shock is same location and the spring turns like this and it comes underneath the frame this one is a pretty tall bag these are deflated and we're sitting on our bump stop right now and because the air is completely out of them but you can see the difference in the height of the two of all three so far being bottomed out um i really like this suspension and pan hard bar nothing nothing we can't handle uh, ride height valves on all of them and we'll put pilot controlled ride height valve with a dump feature so we can dump it and get underneath trailers but uh, let's go look over at the other property i got a couple more i think i find i th i'm thinking of one in particular i think it's going to work real well all right this is an old u-haul truck i got it's an 88 uh gvw is like 18,000 pounds it's u-haul derated these things so that you could still you know run it to a bunch of people and not need a cdl it is a lower gvw and the way to tell on an international is the frame comes back and typically you see this step up right here and that's a pretty good indication it's a lower gvw i've seen these uh actually my blue rollback has that and it's i believe it's 25999 but still um this is another suspension i was considering this is the same as that very first one i showed you only this bracket is quite a bit smaller because uh, this frame isn't as tall so it is a lighter gvw lighter uh lighter weight rear axle this one's only the bracket itself is eight inches total and it's two inches from the top and two inches from the bottom on those bolt holes so um this one works the same got the same setup always it would need leaf spring comes over the top again same problem three and a half inch spring it's a nice setup because it's compact and if you see what they did here they came down like this and you can see the caliper interference that you have here i mean this moves with the caliper so that's not an issue but uh it just goes to show you the what i was talking about with the interference so it drops down here and then the airbag is here but you see how the airbag is different it's it's shoved under the um under the frame even farther and that's achieved by that cross member so you can see over there the bag is sitting on this cross member and the frame so it moves it in quite a bit and then they also got the uh, shocked moves way back here too um, one thing to note about this is you'll see that they have this perch that this is set on but um, there are other there are other versions of this that are not u-haul that uh, this sits down lower now this probably wasn't done correctly because this axle has been moved forward when it was back here the front leaf spring hanger here's the back bolts of that and here is the uh what is this that's the bump stop yeah bump stop track bar and then here's your airbag mount so as you see this shortens up probably at least two inches so being though that was pushed down farther when that was aired up the pinion angle on this probably wouldn't be right i doubt they adjusted for it so that would have need that bar uh, changed adapted and accommodate for this to get the right ride height but i don't think that's going to work but uh we'll use that on something else i'm sure just not on what we have i mean <clears throat> i know somebody's going to ask about why don't you just use this axle it's probably the right let's see it is four and a quarter the problem is this is a v8 uh six or seven three idi motor not uh non-turbo naturally aspirated so this thing has to turn really high rpms 
because you know, it's like 170 horse or something like that. It's not very much, 160, 170. And if you don't have Ohio RPMs and you're pulling, as soon as you drop out of them RPMs, you lose your power. And that's, it wasn't uncommon for these to be 513s and above rear end. So this isn't gonna work for us. Um, not the rear end or the suspension, but you know, I'll keep it in mind for something else that we got going on. Another build we've been thinking about, but let's go look at something else. So this is another truck frame that I have. Uh, I bought this from a guy and he was parting the truck out and he cut the front off of it because that's what he needed. He needed the motor and the transmission and all that. This is off an international. This is a 4300 chassis and uh, it's in good shape. I come here to look at the suspension again. Another international air ride with the a leaf leaf spring under but you know what's really nice about this one's unique is you see this bracket at the bottom it moves the shock to the inside of the frame rail that's very nice that's that will help us with accessing our brake caliper quite a bit and uh, again same bag setup nice tall bag uh, the right height valve's gone but the rod's still here we, you know make it a dump situation there pilot control dump I don't know what the ratio was of this rear end. I mean, I'm only concerned because of what's going through my mind right now. I was able to put a little grease on it and it looks like it's a 488 gear. So 488 isn't ideal, but you'd also have 22.5 tires, so that's helpful. If I don't have a tag on there, my experience has been you can always go to the end of the pinion and there's usually the number of teeth that are on the pinion, the number of teeth that are on the pin, uh, ring gear stamped in there. So you can usually divide the two and come up with what the ratio is. Yeah, this is a really good option here. Not only that, the, it brings that airbag back a little bit more. Um, so, you know, when you bring that airbag back, it changes the ride. I, th I think it's a, a little better ride, actually. And I love how it moves that shock to the inside there. That's pretty attractive, so. All right, let's look at a couple other things. All right, so this is a 67 Cummins. This is one of the options that we're considering. So I wanted to do a little bit of measuring here. I got measurements off the other, off the 4500. I want to see how close we are here. Oh man, that's like 23 and a half to the top of, of my degas bottle here recovery tank expansion tank whatever you want to call it so let's say it's under 23 inches boy that's we could probably bring that down just a little bit if we need or use a different one but the top of the engine shoot it's lower than the top of that engine is lower than the six seven or the six six duramax that uh, coolant hose over there is about 20 inches Hmm, okay, so that's attractive. This is what I was thinking is the 6.7 Cummins is probably the easiest of all. Um, let's go from the cooler pack to the back of the engine. Let's see what we got. We had 48 on on the 6.6. So, come on. I'm on tape measure. Work with me here. And we got about mm, to the back of the engine probably about 54 which I think is going to be about standard on most of these now this this 67 I believe is a 240 horse if I remember right and uh, of course it's paired to a manual transmission so um, that already gives us our flywheel which this will be a uh, this will be a 14 inch clutch measure cross bolt to bolt that'll give us our SAE so we'll know what this is probably a two center bolt center bolt let's go it's about four and just about four and three quarters so i mean you can there's several ways you can measure it like the inside diameter the outside diameter that kind of stuff but as long as i got something to go with i wanted to look at was the space between the oil pan and the axle and how much closer we could get because god you could see what a difference what a you can see that on here. The oil pan's not even close to that that axle, so it's not the lowest. Um, 
So we could probably drop that engine, or actually drop the suspension quite a bit on one of these. This is a much bigger frame. Uh, I've said before, I think the 6.7 is probably one of the simpler conversions that I could I could be doing. The other thing is, you see how the, the breathers, up, the crankcase breather filters up on top and then it drops down. It gets even lower back here and it's not a very wide motor. And my truck's an 05, this is an 09. So um, my truck only has an EGR valve. This being an 09 had an EGR, a DPF. However, it did not use uh, DEF fluid. So uh, it just had the DPF. So this would be a step up in emissions from where we are. This is probably the easiest. I mean, look how low the, the cooler pack sits in this frame. Uh, the bigger problem is gonna be the width of the hood. Will it, will it clear this? Because the F750s, which is what this is, you know, it's quite wide right here. Um, anyways, another option. All right, so I buy buses for parts uh, quite often, as you might be able to tell. And uh, the reason I do is because just the fact of how reasonable they can be bought and all the parts um, that they offer uh, that, that are able to be used. And most of the time they're, they're put out of service for rust issues on the body, which this one's no different. This one is a uh, 2002 and it's got a DT-466, I don't know, probably 220 horse. Um, I don't know if this will be the high torque version or low torque. I wouldn't know till I run the VIN number. Um, but the reality is, you can get an awful lot of uh, parts out of these. They're the ones I buy, I always buy them with air brakes, automatic, and air ride rear suspension. Uh, these ones I bought, these two here, I bought in a package deal. And um, this one has a, this one has an Allison AT545, which I'm not a fan of because they're not a lockup converter. But again, it's a package deal. The one behind it has an Allison MD3060, I think. So we're going to take some measurements and see what the height is from the top of the frame to the top of the engine and see where we're at here. All right, so top of the engine, let's call the intake right there. It's hard for you guys to see it, but it's 26 inches to the top of that uh, tube for the, inner, for the air intake coming in. That's the highest point. The cooler pack is also, um, let's see if I can get this in here. It's about 28, but uh, it could be dropped slightly because of uh, this bracket. That could be changed a little bit. So about 28 inches. The big problem with DT-466 is gonna be the length because this is a very long engine this way. And I think we're gonna need quite a bit more than that 6.7. One thing to note about bus engines, or buses in, in, in general, um, these engines may have low miles on them, but it's the same, you might as well double the miles based on the use and the way they're used because, you know, they're meant to go pick up kids and it's start and stop, start and stop, start and stop, and it's kind of hard on these motors. Um, so keep that in mind when you buy them. But I like a DT-466, the wet line motor, and like I said before, I've got great support from our international dealer, so uh, this might be a good option. Um, but we're going to look at the other one because this is a 3800 series bus, international. The one behind it is an IC bus, and it has a sloped hood. So we'll look at that, but I want to get some general measurements. I want to get that length there and see where we're at, because I don't think I can move this forward. Now, it could probably go forward a little bit this this is a half and half radiator uh half vertical boy that's a brand new radiator uh half of the, the radiator and half is the intercooler or the after charge cooler whatever you want to call it and this this fan could go quite a bit closer we could short shrink that up a little bit if this was a chassis or the motor transmit or motor we combination we were thinking about using so it's about 54 inches from the dog box up here to the front of the cooler pack. So that gives us an idea of where we can, you know, change things, manipulate or what have you. So look at the other one. But you can see how the nose on this one is sloped down more like my 4500. So you have a real small grill right here. So let's open this up. I see the raccoons have been in here. Go figure. Okay. 
So right off the bat, I can see that it looks like uh, the cooler pack is set quite a bit lower. I don't think the engine is. I think the engine's okay. I don't remember what year this one was. Um, this is an 03 version. So still before the 2004. Um, both of these have right at 100,000 miles on them. So let's see what we got here. So from the top of the frame. Still about 26 inches there. Let's look over here at the cooler pack. It's about 24 inches over here. So this this dropped quite a bit, and we can get rid of these bars and just have a support coming in this way. Um, this one has an MD3060 automatic, but you see this is why it's out of service, this kind of stuff here. And there, it's worse than that, but that's, that's what usually condemns them. But um, the other thing is, this is set down on that frame low, but I don't know that it can't go any lower because this whole, the whole way this, this engine mounts in this frame um, is on cradles. So the intercooler is on a cradle, the front engine is on a cradle, and the back is on transmission mounts, uh, fly, flywheel, clutch housing mounts, and then the rear transmission is just kind of hanging off the back of the motor. But if you look down here, it looks like we have quite a bit of clearance between the oil pan and that front axle. And this is a nice drop axle to begin with. This was kind of a low chassis bus anyhow. So we might be able to drop that oil pan or drop the motor down a little bit more. Uh, maybe put a skid plate on it just to protect it. But um, we can get it down lower and that would take care of a lot of clearance problems because the lower we go back here, uh, the, the less I have to open this up or the less width that I need to get the motor under under my cab. So if we can go lower, that'd be better. I mean, it may only be, you know, two, three, four inches, but man, that'll be huge. Um, but I guess what I'm telling you is I keep thinking that, you know, it's time to just yank that cab and just set it on, a, on another chassis um, because I can get parts for this, everything onto this front end, everything for this drive line is so accessible, it's not funny. If I don't have it myself, I can get it for sure. But uh, and this truck, this bus has air ride. It's not an air ride we'd probably end up using, but uh, it has it. I wouldn't use it for this setup. I think there's better options. This is an international setup. Uh, we can't use the rear end because it's probably a again a 617 or 578 ratio. So. Um, and I would probably still like to use a manual transmission. The only, only problem with that is if I put a manual transmission in that truck, if something happens, my wife needs to drive it. Um, she could drive a, a traditional synchronized uh, six-speed or seven-speed, but if you put her in a 10 or a 13-speed, uh, I'm not sure. It would take a, a lot of practice, and then by the time if something happens, she may have forgotten so that's not ideal but again this is probably 210 horse and uh, 220 horse probably is international but this thing can probably go right up to the 250 mark just in the flashing because the engines are built so robust uh, that usually you can you can take the, the the horsepower up a good bit on these from 220 to 250 uh, because all the internals like the injectors the pistons um, the turbo Connecting rods are basically the same until you get over a certain level of horsepower. And I think that would be the case with this one. I think this is going to be a 220. Not that I can get to the tag. Yeah, I can't get to it. But, uh, yeah, and there's coon poop on it. That's great. You see they've been bringing straw up here from the barn. But anyways, that's where we're at. And, you know, I thought maybe this sloped hood might... Uh, might be an option but uh yeah i guess i guess i got a lot to think about but it's sure looking like we're doing a chassis swap and if we're doing a chassis swap i'm going to air brake axles i don't i don't want to i don't want hydraulic brakes if i'm going heavier boy those are some neat mirrors squirrel yeah check that out that's pretty cool how that mounts huh 
I'll have to make sure I remember that. Those will clean up pretty nice, I think. Boy, is that a nice set of mirrors, huh? Hmm. Okay. Let's get out of here. Oh, there's you. There's what you can see. So this is kind of what does them in. You see how they start to come apart in the back here. Uh, this is pretty common. But, you know, you can buy these things reasonable. I mean, in my area, this is a, about 4000 bucks. They always usually have good tires on them. I don't know if you've priced tires lately, but these are Hankook 11R 22.5s. And they are deep in tread. And they're not old. So they're a good investment for parts. All right, let's go. I gotta do some thinking. I'm gonna look, make sure there's nothing else I can think of here. So this is an 06 DT 466. This one is uh, in a 4400. So the cab is sitting a little bit higher on this one. Let's see if I can get up here. The cab sits up higher on this one. So you have a lot more room um, in here. But this has EGR cooler on it, EGR of course. This is a next generation of of emissions but i just wanted to get a good measurement because it's easy right here to see what it is and man 54 to the cooler pack let's see 54 and probably fan clutch is about 45 let's see what the height is on this one nice thing about this is you see the intake comes off the side the air intake so that's that's very helpful on the height. Yeah, that gets our height down to right about 22 inches. 22 and a half, something like that. That intake would be very, very helpful. And I don't need this tier of exhaust uh, emissions because my truck is in is an 05. So, well, I guess it's the same. Be the same tier. But this could work. This could work. Now, this is a little bit... I believe this truck was a higher horsepower and higher torque than the other DTs I have. And this one's an Allison, geez, is this one a 3200? Hmm. And this is already an air ride suspension. This is air brake, air ride, um, aluminum wheels, aluminum tanks, long frame. Frame's nice and clean. Got a little bit of rust jacking off the, the box that was on it, but nothing big paint coming off um oh look at that it's a hendrickson you gotta be kidding me watch that be three inch sure looks like a three inch leaf spring doesn't it sure is three inch leaf spring hmm. shocks back here out of the way i don't know why i keep going to that because if we're changing chassis it don't matter new brake shoes brake chambers look good huh well, look, aluminum inners and outers on the wheels. 22.5 tires are good. We end up going low pros. wonder what the ratio is in this rear end. Yeah. That tag's gone. I can see that one there. Oh, it's a locker. Look at that. It's got a locking differential. Holy crap. I guess I better call and find out what this rear end ratio is because... We may have just found our donor. I think this is it. I think this is her. Um, and I don't mind using this one because the uh, the cab on this one has uh, began to get a little decay going on. It's not horrible. It's still usable. Oh, look, air ride cab. Man, this just keeps getting better. Better and better. I have to get underneath there and get that model off the transmission. You know what? It's not going to matter because I know who did the maintenance on this. So they'll have all the records too. Yep. We don't want that battery box and the air tanks are probably leaking. Um, well, this might be the one. The only I can think of that we might want to change is uh, get the front suspension lower. Do we have enough room? Yes. We have... Eh. We have some room. I guess there's about eight inches of travel. So we might be able to get the front down just with changing tire size. Maybe that's the way to go. And the rear, we can get down a tire size too. See it's a low mount bracket. Um, yeah, I wonder what ratio this was. This truck was designed to go highway 
products by the company that order it. They order these uh, from the international dealer, spec the way they are. This is kind of a unique truck. It's got a um, keyless entry, power windows, power locks. Uh, I believe it's got heated power mirrors too, if I remember right. Let's look. It's even better when you get the full build sheet on the truck when you buy it. Look at that. DT-466 high torque, 285 horsepower, 2400 RPM governed. Absolutely fantastic. So let me find the transmission. Let's see, Allison 3000, HS 5 speed, left side PTO, no retarder. Push button shift. Hmm. I think we just found our, we just found our chassis. I think this is what we're going to use. This is a whole entire build sheet for the truck from, from International. It came with all my paperwork. I may have spoke too soon. This is an 06 as well, and it was in an accident. The front axle shoved back, but the frame's good. Um, I don't know the horsepower on this one yet, but it's a... It's an Allison Automatic as well. I don't have a build sheet on it, so I'm going to take the VIN number. I'm going to call AMI and see see what horsepower it is and see what transmission it is and see what rear end we got. This might be a better choice because it's kind of already um, taken apart. I've been robbing parts off it for years. I sold the box, or it had a flatbed on it. Sold that, took the batteries. Um, good bit of stuff. All right, so the end of that video got cut off. I ran out of memory on the, on the camera. Um, but that truck I was looking at has the DT-466. It's a 220 horse with an Allison 2200 in it so that it might be an option um the 6.7 i think is the nicest conversion end product because i have to also realize that when i'm done with this um i may end up selling it still you just never know and it may be more attractive i know it'd be more attractive to me with a 6.7 than it would be a dt 466 the dt 466 is my preference but uh and I still want to build a sellable truck as well. And that leads me to a couple other things. Um, some guys in the comments, I'm going to have to readdress this because apparently they were in the back of the classroom eating crayons and uh, licking, licking the glue. Uh, but uh, they said that, you know, if you didn't like the truck, why'd you buy it? Well, I'm going to tell you, the whole point of this was I made it clear. I thought I made it clear in that video. Um, I like the cabs of these trucks. I like the brakes on these trucks, all right? Ford and Dodge, neither one of them uh, built a medium-duty cab this spacious. Um, you know, Freightliner makes one in the medium-duty line. I don't know if anybody international does, but, you know, they're very utilitarian. They're really not like this on the interiors uh, and i'm not talking about the aftermarket stuff i'm talking about the original medium duty these are, i think these are a much better much nicer uh medium duty to travel in because of the space of the cab and the height like i keep saying it, it's it's very spacious um but understand also that i like these cabs so well um i have owned five of these crew cabs uh, I currently own two, this one and another one. The other one has a Western hauler bed on the back of it. Um, the uh, and the one I had three at one time actually. Um, the the other one was a crew cab, 84 cab to axle spring ride, and it and it was nothing on the back. I just put a fifth wheel on the back for hauling a big uh, step deck trailer we had, and um, shoot that thing rode better than this with air ride so um what i did like about it and i'll make it clear again is the cab the height the how high you sit up how good your visibility is still don't like the mirrors the mirrors you know they're not fantastic but i can live with that so the gist of it is i could probably stuff a six seven cummins down in here and utilize what's here um but GM doesn't support this chassis. I mean, if you start, if you own one of these and you start looking for parts, um, there's a lot of things that are difficult to get, you know, they're, or they're extremely pricey if you can find them. So for me, I think the best thing I can do, which I just kind of lied to myself, this whole project saying I'm not going to do it, but it's lift the cab and the hood off. Just put it on another chassis. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys said that in the first part that, yeah, you don't like it, so now you're going to take it apart and spend a bunch of money. Well, actually, I'm not. I mean, you'd have to, you'd have to understand if those people probably don't watch the channel often. That I'm very cost conscious in in projects. So, 
the reality is I bought this truck for and I paid I paid a real amount of money for this truck when I bought it it was no deal um, that's what one guy said he said you must have got a really good deal on this truck to take it apart no I didn't I paid what it was worth when I bought it and uh, I sold the bed off it and I sold the suspension so that took me from there to here to here so in reality what it has done by selling what I didn't like and didn't want is it has brought the amount of money I have invested in this plus the suspension that I'm gonna put on here I don't owe anything and it's not cost me anything you're on parts trucks there are extra parts I have laying around now if if you figure out the cost and I'll explain how this works when I buy a truck for parts what I like to do is I like to sell off enough stuff that I know I'm not going to use and don't want to get my money back out of the truck or I'll take parts off that I use and I charge them to the truck I'm building therefore my parts trucks that I'm considering using with this I have zero dollars in I have zero money in the ones that I'm considering using I want to make that clear I have zero dollars in the motors the transmissions the frames the suspensions that I'm considering using so when I'm done with this and in the final thing the plan is this the plan is to is the next step is to go ahead and put the air ride suspension on that I choose we're gonna move this axle back that two feet I told you about we're gonna come back to here we're gonna stretch on a little bit of frame here a couple guys said why don't you just you know get a cut off splice it up here I don't want to do that I'll explain why later but I want to add it to the end one it's it's less critical and two it helps my plan later so we're gonna move that I'll have the cost of the little frame extensions and a little bit of drive shaft work so probably five six hundred dollars I'll have in that um, and then we're going to put the bed on now you have to understand that when I bought this truck I never liked that dually bed and I never liked that suspension. So from day one, I had been looking for something else to put on the back. And when I came across the one that I found that was specifically for this generation of truck that came off one of these trucks and I could buy it reasonable, I flew out and I got it. And it's been here for about a year now. So I have that, the fuel tanks we're gonna use, I have zero dollars in. Um, that I'll have money, like I said, in them frame extensions and the drive shaft. We'll put this together, put the bed on it, we'll get it back to work where I can use it, and then, of course, it's always for sale, so if it sells while it's built like that, so be it. If it doesn't, then come fall time, when I finished up a bunch of my big projects we got going, I want to bring a, a chassis in, and I want to build that chassis front to back the way I want it, and then take this body and that hood and set it on that chassis. I have not made a decision on the engine yet. I've only made a decision on the air ride suspension and the fact that eventually this is going, oops, it's raining. This is going on another chassis. So the engines that I've narrowed it down to, 3126 cat, 6.7 Cummins, DT 466. Really these two are probably the bigger runnings um, I love I prefer the DT 466, but the reality is I want to build a truck that's sellable too when I'm done so The 6.7 is probably the 6.7 Cummins is probably the most attractive to most people with this setup It's not going to be the 3126 cat because 3126 cat people either love them or hate them. It's one or the other um, as far as the DT 466 I prefer that because my international dealer is fantastic and I have great support plus their wet line motor which the 3126 cat is not neither is the 6.7 cummins but that's where we're headed and now it's starting to rain i've been doing some measurements checking this all out to see where we're at and if my theory is correct and i think we're okay and the other point why i didn't want to cut the frame in the belly in front of the axle is because once we pull this off this cab and this hood off of here i'm going to sell this entire chassis with those aluminum wheels with the the tires the air suspension we put on motor transmission uh cooler pack drive everything and it can go to somebody else and if they want to they want to buy it that'll be just fine it'll have about 40 probably 48,000 miles on it still so we'll sell that off as well but uh anyways next time you see us we'll be working on that frame on this project but we got to finish up some others first but thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one